When I picked up the M4 Pro Mac Mini, I wasn't sure if it would handle everything that I had planned for it. This was going to be my primary Mac and deal with a wide variety of tasks from lighter stuff like web browsing and productivity to more resource intensive things like coding, content creation with a bit of 3D modeling mixed in. Fast forward three months to now, I'd say I've got a pretty good grasp on how it's handled all of those tasks, but I've had some things happen in my space where I've ended up using the Mini in some unexpected ways, and the M4 Pro in here has really surprised me. That being said, there are still a couple of pain points or annoyances that I've had with this machine, and today I want to break down the whole experience. What's been great, what issues I've had or what I would change, and whether the M4 Pro Mac Mini has been worth the cost. It should at least provide a reference point if you're unsure if the Mini is going to work for you, or if you just want to see what the last few months have looked like with my own use, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. When it comes to using my Mac, I'm normally doing a lot with it. I would say that I'm a pretty creative or artistic person, and I also love learning new things, which normally means that I need a machine that can handle a wide range of apps and use cases. Some of those things, like making these videos for instance, take up a lot of system resources, so I end up needing a fairly powerful machine to be able to run them effectively, and the Mini is an attractive option in that sense, just due to how much you can get for the price. The version that I have here is the 14 core M4 Pro variant with a 1 terabyte SSD and 48 gigs of RAM and comes in at 2199 USD, which I know in itself isn't a super cheap option, but if you look at a MacBook Pro with those same specs, the Mini is $600 cheaper, and if you're using your Mac primarily as a desktop, the Mini just makes a lot more sense in that regard. Even if you do plan on using this in different locations, provided you either have the accessories to use this setup somewhere or you have some portable accessories with you, this thing is so small that it's super easy to throw in a bag and pack around with you. The Mini is only 5x5 five five inches in surface area and it's just 2 inches tall, making it relatively simple to place pretty much anywhere, but it's also quite versatile in how you want to place it as well. I've been having a ton of fun designing and 3D printing different case layouts for it, and there are folks like Jared Hoffirth that have been making some really cool mini accessories. I just think it's neat that there's been this whole other creative aspect to these machines that we haven't really seen on any other Mac. Now, if we're talking about the actual functional aspect of this design, I know that there was some concern about the power button being on the bottom of the new Mini, where it does seem to be rather inconvenient, but the number of times that I've actually turned this machine off or on with that button is probably still in the single digits. The only time I really ever touch the power button is when I unplug the Mini and move it, and I've never really noticed it, so I'm still fine with that location, and as far as the ports go, I would say things have mostly been fine there with a couple of minor exceptions. First of all, having the three Thunderbolt 5 ports along the back has been completely fine for me in terms of availability. Normally I've got my studio display using up one port, my external SSD on the other, and the one left over will occasionally be used for something else, say if I'm testing out a hub or a dock, but to be honest I haven't really felt like I've needed anything else there. I used to have a Caldigit TS4 dock at my desk, but that started acting up on me a while back, and I just haven't bothered to get anything else because I'm still waiting for a solid Thunderbolt 5 option. The Thunderbolt 5 hubs and docks that I have tried so far have been somewhat underwhelming, so that's been a bit disappointing, but having a Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure that gets insanely fast speeds has definitely been nice to have, and I think it's the one area where you can immediately notice a difference versus Thunderbolt 4. Outside that, for the things that I'm using less frequently, like charging my keyboard or mouse or attaching other storage devices, the two 10 gigabit front ports are totally fine for accommodating that, and the only thing that I'd wish I'd done was upgrade the Ethernet port from the 1 gig variant that I have here to the 10 gig option, because I do have a little different network connection now compared to when I started with this machine. 
If you've been around on the channel for a while, you've probably noticed that over the last month or so, I've moved to a new space, and there is some drama that went along with that move that I'm going to touch on in a bit, but with that change, I've also switched my network connection from exclusively using Wi-Fi to using a wired Ethernet connection. The Wi-Fi connection in the new space isn't as strong as it's a lot further away from the pod than it was before. The Mini itself also doesn't have the greatest range, and while it's still usable and I haven't had any trouble with it, there happens to be an Ethernet cable ran through my wall right beside the Mini, so it just made a lot more sense to use that. My internet bandwidth is also a 1 gigabit fiber connection, so the 1 gig ethernet port on the mini isn't a bottleneck at all in that sense, but I do have a NAS hooked up that can potentially run at 2.5 gigabits wired, so it would have been nice to have the extra transfer speed and just to future-proof myself a bit, but all in all, other than that, things have been outstanding as far as connection goes, be it wireless or wired. I've never seen any drops, any ecosystem features like casting to an Apple TV, using AirDrop or HomeKit have all been great, and even when I use Blip to mimic AirDrop functionality between my Android devices and the Mac Mini, I've had no hangups whatsoever. I rely on some of those features quite frequently for making these videos, and just coming back to what I'm using the Mini for or what I'd plan to use it for, Due to circumstance, that ended up expanding a bit from what my initial plans were at the end of last year. Around mid-December, I started to notice a little crease in my flooring where my space previously was, which at first was barely noticeable, but after we got a big rainfall here, I knew something was very, very wrong. The laminate flooring was lifting up everywhere and you could hear the water squish under your feet. And what we ended up finding was a giant crack in our foundation here that really complicated things for me. That basically rendered my Mac setup unusable between the leak and people coming in and out for repairs, and luckily I had a MacBook to get me through for a while until I figured things out, which I think I'll do a long-term review on as well sometime soon, but at that time I was already in the initial stages of moving my space, where I had my gaming PC temporarily set up in the room that I'm in now. So I just took that out of here and brought in the mini where I ended up using it both for the things that I normally would do, but also for gaming way more than I typically would on a Mac. I was very surprised with just how good this is for gaming, where I can run games at reasonably high frame rates and settings. Granted, there's not a huge selection of games available for Mac, but if you just want to pop on here, relax, and just have some fun, the M4 Pro Mac Mini is more than capable. Lately I've been playing The Long Dark and Baldur's Gate 3, and this week I've been diving into Civilization 7 a little, all of which run completely fine, but fair warning, the fans will run almost 100% of the time while gaming. Moving away from gaming into other tasks, the M4 Pro handles pretty much everything that you throw at it. Obviously, things like web browsing and productivity don't really move the needle too much on this chip, and you can get by on a much less powerful machine for those things, but more demanding things like coding have been super snappy. I've mostly been working on my battery testing app on here in React Native, which has basically had zero lag in any part of the development process. And the same goes for 3D work, where I've mostly been using the Mini for designing parts to 3D print. That being said, if I open up a complex 3D project, I definitely notice some lag where the M4 Max would probably make more sense, but the M4 Pro is all that I personally need, both for the things that I just mentioned and for content creation, which is what I primarily got this machine for. I spent a huge part of my time creating content, and that ranges from anything like graphic design or photo editing to video editing and making motion graphics, and with almost all of that stuff, it's buttery smooth. I'll often have larger 4K timelines open and running in Final Cut Pro, where I don't have any slowness at all and things are very responsive, just regularly editing a video, but that can change where, say, if I'm screen recording while I'm in Final Cut Pro and I go to analyze or track a mask, that will run a lot slower, and the same goes for resource-heavy effects, where some of my plugins can really bog down the machine and cause the fans to start running, but 
Those are in very specific instances and they're few and far between. Also, I'm not sure if anyone else has noticed this, but when the fans kick on, depending on where I have the Mac Mini, it produces this high-pitched frequency that can be quite annoying. I'm not sure if that's coming from the Mini itself, or the fan noise is interacting with my setup or other room noise, but if you also happen to have one of these new M4 Minis, let me know in the comments if you've experienced anything similar, because I am curious about that. When it comes to the photo editing and graphic design part of content creation, say if I'm editing thumbnails for videos, Things are again super smooth without any problems, but the one thing that I will say here is that I'm terrible for leaving my apps open. So say if I'm working on a video, I might have Final Cut Pro open, but also Affinity Photo, Lightroom, and whatever other tools that I've used recently. And there have been times where I'll get a memory warning from Clean My Mac or hear some fan noise and I'll have a quick look to see what's going on and it's almost always Lightroom running in the background, taking up like 20 gigs of memory. So even bumping up that memory spec a bit, if you're not careful, you can still hit a limit or a bottleneck there, but I would say that's mostly because of inefficient apps or processes rather than the machine not having enough horsepower. In any case, I've been thoroughly impressed with the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and I definitely think it's my favorite Apple product over the last few years. You're getting decent value for the price, it's super portable and easy to place for a desktop machine, and over the last three months, I've had very few pain points with it. I know that most people will probably gravitate towards the regular M4 version of the Mac Mini because that's insanely affordable starting at $599 USD, and I'm not sure if you guys would maybe be interested in me looking at that base machine and seeing what it's capable of in terms of my own workflow and where the cutoff point might be between that and the M4 Pro, but if you are, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll also drop my initial review of this Mac in the description below, so feel free to check that out, but that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me make a Mac Mini modular case that follows your cat around with live commentary, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.